So Jean Gendlin spoke of um, dead end feelings, dead end stories. And in a way, this is how we might normally live our lives in a kind of uh, patterning from childhood or wherever the pattern began. And that pattern served us when it arose in that moment. But years later, it's out of context. And they can turn into dead end feelings and dead end stories. And what that means is they become a reactive habit. Mm. So we're not, we're not relating to them in a fresh, open way anymore. They, they're just part of our everyday routine. We're triggered into those patterns. So something could trigger a depression or trigger an anger or, you know, and then we're in it. And then, you know, it seems like we're owned by them. We become a hostage to them, you know, that kind of thing. When we, when we feel like we're overwhelmed or we're dominated. And, and in a way, the more we try to get out of it, the worse it seems to get for us. So where focusing comes in is um, basically come into, coming into exquisite relationship into a quality of connection, into a quality of befriending. We call it companioning in focusing. So we know in focusing, those parts have within them their own liberation, their own resolution. And our task then, if we move from dead-end feelings and dead-end thoughts, is to learn how to come into connection with them in a way that's safe. So presence is the key certainly in focusing and presence in focusing is a little bit different from presence let's say in mvc i believe it offers a very very embodied and deep and exquisite way of being with those parts because when you say i am i am sad or i am anxious actually in focusing we would say something in me is something in me is feeling something in me is hurt or something in me <clears throat> is like that we might not have a feeling word but it's it's there and we it's been there for years it just keeps erupting so then we learn to say hello and then in the hello-ness there comes an, an exquisite forward movement if we stay with it you know so uh, using a butterfly analogy it's a bit like we learn to open our hand to our experience and let the butterfly come to us rather than trying to snatch it with a net and damage it and hurt it and it's on the run those parts are on the run they're trying to preserve us. They're trying to save our lives. And very often, they're, they're just keeping distance so they can keep our lives in some kind of shape or form that it recognizes as okay. But of course, for other parts, we want the freedom and the liberation. And that comes through this practice of focusing. Hmm. Hmm. So there's a sigh. Something's, something's landed there. <clears throat> and for me, it is about the exquisite nature of the gentle, delicate nature of being with, rather than repressing, masking, attacking, forcing away, blaming, you know, because those are our, those are our genuine, those are our ge general modus operandi. We generally work in those ways. So we're learning to allow the fresh edge of a new experience to emerge from the old habit. That to me is exquisite beauty. Mm. And even now sharing this with you, maybe there's something in you that's going, oh, there's a possibility around all. Mm. There's a creating space around it. 